All right, all right. So here we are in one of our many workspaces uh, of PWB. That is my company, Phoenix Wealth Builders. This is the Podio workspace, and as you can see, it has a little bit of a feel to like a Facebook, right, where you have an activity feed that you can scroll down. These are all things that are happening um, live time. As you can see, notes are being made three hours ago on this property. Um, a new lead, Tim Vaughn, came in three days ago. Uh, you know, three hours ago, a new lead, Rebecca Lindstrom, came in. Dave's calling him now. He left a voicemail. So as you can see, it's very, very user-friendly, and it really can be very advantageous, especially when you're trying to track and, um, you know, what you're doing with your leads, right? Um, and what notes and where your notes are going and all of that kind of stuff. So this is one of our workspaces. We have, gosh, all of these workspaces are workspaces that we use uh, for our marketing. But this just happens to be one of them. Um, and so what I want to do is I want to walk through with you how to effectively use this, right? And so there is a calendar associated with Podio. It is right here, right? So you have your calendar right here. You can open up your calendar. It absolutely connects to your Google calendars. It connects to anything by simply clicking this, and then you can actually invite people's calendars in here, okay? So very, very simple to do. Make sense? So now, if I just go back to the activity, um, I also utilize the task uh, bar quite frequently. Like if I want to create a task for my acquisition manager, you can say call so and so, and then I can pick a person to task. Let's say I want Dave Rosefield. It'll automatically populate him. When is it going to be due? It needs to be due today. At what time? Let's say 5 p.m. Boom. And then here I can give a little bit of notes, and I can create a task. And what that does, it automatically goes over here to his notifications and remains in here under tasks. So as you can see, the notification part um, you can, you know, anytime something's happening, you can see what's going on in there, okay? Um, so this is very useful. If you want to direct message people, IM people, you can IM people in here, right? So again, you can, you know, you guys don't have a team the size of mine. Most, most of you wouldn't, um, but there's a lot of great ways to communicate um, via this tool, right? Via this tool. So... Let's go back to the workspace that I was just showing you guys. And uh, let's see if we can close this real quick. So, <clears throat> as you can see, obviously it has a feed like that. Now, I talked to you about the calendar already. Obviously, here's the tasks. I just talked to you about the tasks. Um, some of these need to be cleaned up, obviously. Um, but then you have notifications also when a task is given to you, you get a notification and then you can put it right in your calendar. So very, very easy to use. This is a feed just like Facebook. You can type anything in. You can tag people at Anthony, right? Now, whatever I just wrote, I share that and it's going to tag them the same way it would in Facebook, right? So again, you can attach a file if you want to attach a file, a document, a picture, very, very simple to use, especially those who are familiar with the Facebook or the how to use a Facebook, right? Um, so very simple. Uh, you know, what I want to start doing now is I want to jump into the actual actual usefulness of where everything happens. Everything starts as an incoming call. Now, as I click on this, you're going to see these are all the incoming calls. Now what we have is we have a third party, like a, it's called Zapier, right? And Zapier, what Zapier does is it pushes this call, automatically it pushes it from an incoming call into a seller lead, okay? So I never really go into incoming calls as the app, but it needs to be there because that's where all of the, uh, 
that's where all of the incoming calls come to, but Zapier actually pushes that automatically into a seller lead. Now, as you can see, calls that are coming in today, have some of them haven't even been reached yet, right? So there's no name yet because we don't have you know contact with them yet. So if you take a look at this one, this is how it shows up, okay? Seller's name is 707-249-3490. Well, we would call the seller back. The seller would say her name is Jessica or his name is John. We then populate that and start filling out some of the information, the property address, the email, the phone number, right? And then single family home, condo, town home. All of these things, as you click them, start to populate the marketing, excuse me, marketing campaign is PWB owner occupied. That's the list we sent it to. So that is the marketing campaign. Um, if it came into a different marketing campaign and you have multiple, um, that's not where I wanted to go. But if you have multiple, then that's where it would go, right? So as I go back in here, all of the notes uh, are said right here. So Dave did contact this person, said, take me off list. Bummer, I was excited to call the 707 number. That's his note. You type in your notes here on the right-hand side. You click add, and it will add another note here. And it will say that you wrote the note, right? So it really is very helpful for accountability, note-taking, um, you know, stage of the lead. This one happened to be a take me off lick list. Next action is to opt them out. Um, and so on, right? But if you got more information about the home, you'd put in the bed bath, you put in the size, the year built, you're really able to, now the seller lead, you're able to give a lot of information about the property, right? Um, as much as you possibly can, okay? Um, the nice part about Podio is it actually, that person did leave a voicemail and it automatically, like I told you, the incoming call automatically pushes to seller lead well, it attaches the voicemail alongside of it, and you actually can play this voicemail right here, right? So very, very useful. Um, if I go back to seller leads, I'm gonna choose one that did answer, and we did get, so Rebecca, same thing happened, she called in, but as you can see, they called the phone number, got her name as Rebecca, put in their, her address, right? Um, no contact made. As you can see on the right hand side, he said he left a voicemail. So then he's gonna do a follow-up contact, right? And choose a follow-up time. He put a Zillow link in when he was doing just a quick uh, analysis, so to speak, just going and finding the home, looking at the home. He put the link in and he will then, you know, again, the voicemail is in there, but he will do a follow-up and he will task himself, as you can see, on the right hand side here, he added a task to try Rebecca again, no contact, right? So he's gonna task himself um, another call later on in the future. Wanna try to get one that possibly um, was filled out a little bit more. Okay, so name, address, owner on tax record is John blah blah blah, he definitely, um, put some more notes in here, obviously. And as you can see as we go down, the marketing campaign was um, absentee owner, PWB. Initial contact was made, appointment was set. Um, go on appointment, he updated the Zillow, he put that it's a two bedroom, one bath, 962 square feet, year built 1939, which is really old for Phoenix. Um, he put the comps in that he ran, he put his notes in here, ARV ranges $109 a square foot um, to $166 a square foot, but given an active underwriting, uh, multiple offers, or under contract, multiple offers in a few days. So he thinks 145,000 is the ARV. Um, if a rehabber gets this at 80 and put 30 grand into it, resold at 145, they can make a 15%. We try to underwrite at 10%, so 15% would be great. ARV is 145, repairs all of this, right? Remember, we're still in just seller leads. We haven't even started going through um, the next transition, right? Voicemails attached, and away we go. Now, um, and then he set an appointment, right? So an appointment has been set, and that went to the calendar. Again, very, very useful stuff. <clears throat> so if we just go back 
to the workspace. Now, as you see, the seller lead went into an appointment. So he set an appointment. This is, again, appointments. It's a calendar. Um, so Tim Vaughn, there you see it right there. They have an appointment on the 1st at noon, which is an hour and 15 minutes ago, right? So he had an appointment. He might even still be at that appointment, as you can see. Um, but then next would be an inspection. So he's on the appointment, which would be the inspection. Um, and so likely what he is going to be doing here as we... There we go. Um, he will be going on the inspection, then he will be filling out an inspection. So what I can do is I can add an inspection. I can say Tim Vaughn, right? And all of a sudden it's going to populate, right? So he is on it. It's going to be Tim Vaughn. And now we have the property address sitting right there. I can also put it in here. I can put more notes in underwriting, but then I go through my inspection. What condition was everything in? Good, fair, poor, missing, not applicable, right? And then he will be putting his notes in here for the exterior. The neighborhood notes he will put in here, right? Type of condition of flooring, he'll put his notes in here. And it's just like a e email, right? You have a way to, to write. Um, and then what he will do is he will attach pictures by choosing attach file. He will have the pictures uh, on his laptop or desktop and he will attach the pictures, right? So again, very, very easy stuff to do. Now, let's take a look at what it looks like at the end when you have a deal board. Um, this is where deals are getting closed or in contract. We've done our inspections. So let's look at uh, 66. Let's see if I can go down here. So as you can see, everyone's making notes to the right. Um, let's see if I can go down and get my inspection tab. EMD. So again, deal board, you fill this out. Uh, you know, the contract dates, when the inspection's over, actual close date, property description, what title company, lockbox, buy price, marketed price, um, who the buyer is, right? Two true freedom achievers, Tim Wynn. Um, Again, campaign, Justin Colby campaign. Here are the files. Here's the purchase contract. Here's the EMD, the assignment, tags. Darn it. I wanted to be able to show you the inspection. So maybe this wasn't the one I wanted. So let's go here. So let's do an inspection, what it should look like, right? So something a little bit older. But as you can see, all of these connect to each other as you start to fill out add an inspection. So let's look at Cortez. Uh, this is what a filled out inspection would look like, right? And then we even put a Dropbox link of all the pictures in there. But he fills it out, puts in any additional notes that he might have. As you can see, here are the pictures of Cortez, right? So you have it all in one place. You don't have to go to different places, right? And so it, the nice part about that is you can do a new inspection. You can modify the template. You can do, you know, print, clone, email this item, download all the files. You can really be interactive here, right? And adding an inspection is very simple, as I just showed you, right? We did the Tim Vaughn. Um, very, very simple. Uh, and then really you deal with the deal board. This is where you're basically going to close. Now all of these other ones, Ring Central is is in there, but that basically just pushed it gets pushed to incoming calls, moves forward. You can have your buyers list here. Um, you can have your offers, the deals that you've made offers on that may or may not be open. You can have your marketing campaigns. If we open this, it'll show marketing campaigns that we have going. We have 24 different campaigns going, ongoing, live drop happening now, right? That's why we have so many different uh, uh, workspaces. So there are the you know, campaigns we have. We have MLS, MLS offers, mail stats. Um, you know, so we have a lot of different stuff here. But really what you want to be looking at is your incoming call should automatically be pushed to seller leads. Uh, seller leads should be scheduling an appointment, then going on an inspection, and then you have your deal board. And again, your deal board is all about um, that 
closing the deal, the marketing the deal, right? So we'll go in here real quick and look at um, Oregon. I think Oregon closes tomorrow, right? So here's the deal board. Uh, buyer sign tonight, close of escrow will be tomorrow. That was a note Eddie made an hour ago at Fidelity. Um, found the buyer, so under contract, and then if we didn't have a buyer yet, this would be clicked and you'd be out to go find a buyer. Um, contract was accepted January 25th, 2017. Inspection ends on the 15th of February. Actual close date will be the 2nd of March. Um, we bought it at 109, marketed and final sales price at 121.5, right? Profit to be uh, 12.5, which is great. Happy about it. And then you can put earnest money received, yes. Marketing checklist, yes. Um, notes, any notes you want to have in here. Here's obviously the holiday campaign, what campaign it came from. Um, obviously, the files are all going to be here. Any tags need to be given. And that, guys, is the whole flow of Podio. Um, again, you can talk to people over here, direct chat. You can, when you tag people, they get notifications. Um, it, this is very, very easy to use. On the left, you have certain stats that can be collected. Um, and the best part about this, guys, is Podio in and of itself is free. Now, I paid a guy um, money to build it out the way that I want it. Um, if you guys want my exact Podio, um, you will have to pay him. It will not be very expensive. I think it's only $100, but he is actually going to have to go and build it out. So this is not... Um, I'm not selling anything. It's really a cost that I've paid to him, and that you guys have to pay. I paid a lot more, right? I've spent a lot. I've spent thousands of dollars with him building this out. But if you just want to replicate it, he can replicate it for you for a hundred dollars, um, and you can have the exact same layout here. Um, you're going to need to have a phone service like Ring Central or Call Rail. Um, you are going to likely want to have a, a product called Zapier that you'll need, which is what makes things push automatically between here. Um, you know, and there's a lot you can do. I have friends that have built this out so big and robust, and you can send out offers from here. Um, you can send out text messages and chats, and you can call people from here. I didn't build it out that big because I want, I believe simple is better. Um, but guys, this is very, very useful, and hopefully that was uh, good content for you guys to learn how to use Podio. So with that said, uh, any questions on Podio, how to use it, um, anything at all before uh, we wrap it up? What's up, Dave Miller, Curtis, Guy, Joe Fertile? Deborah says, what did you say? Zap view? Oh, zap your Z A P I E R. Um, I think it's like $19 a month. And Zapier is what connects all of these uh, tabs, right? And so that's what pushes them automatically the way I was showing you. Um, thank you, Nelson. I appreciate it. You got it, Deborah. My pleasure. What up, Dave? What up, Robert? How are you? Um, yes, Robert, if you email Andrea at reww.com, she will get you directly with Joseph, who will set up a Podio account for you, just like mine. Again, uh, you will need Zapier for those pushes, and obviously you'll need to have a phone line set up, whether it's Ring Central, call, uh, call Rail, um, or any of those. This is recorded um, and will be on the membership site. Yes, Rafat, absolutely. Under weekly Wednesday wisdoms. Paul Knight, right on, buddy. All right, all right. Seems like there's not too many questions. You're very welcome, Deborah. Right on. All right, guys, we're going to wrap up. Happy Wednesday. Go have a killer week. Uh, and I will see you guys next week on our weekly Wednesday Wisdoms. Peace.
You're welcome, Robert. Really appreciate it. See you guys.